Hello everyone, um, welcome to this spotlight session. It's been a little while since we've done one of these, um, but today's spotlight session is looking at some of the books in our collection that are related to archaeology and antiquities. Um, antiquities was one of the original classifications that we had within the library, within the library system. But interestingly, the books that I've got to show you have all been classified in various different ways within the collection, um, which says something about attitudes towards archaeology across the last two centuries. Um, we also have the, the books that I'm going to show will also cover that period and show in quite interesting ways the development of archaeology as a discipline and as a professional practice. So I'm going to start with some early books and work our way through to some of the slightly more later ones. So the first books that I want to show you today are these two, which are um, a two volume set, volume one, volume two, and these are Pompeiana, um, the topography, edifices and ornaments of Pompeii, um, the result of excavation since 1819 by Sir William Gell in two volumes. And this is volume one and this is volume two and you can see that the two volumes are bound very differently so volume one has this kind of brownish book cloth cover volume two is in the green cloth with the um, half leather binding um, and i think this is um, because there's a note inside volume one um, on the label which says rebound August 1933 so it seems as though for some reason volume one was rebound in the 1930s but volume two was not and you can see that actually the books are in quite poor condition particularly volume one um, so across the cover here you can see this stain um, which does follow onto some of the pages and then the top is really nastily kind of um, broken and um, uh, sort of flaked away. Um, these volumes were stored in the attics and they have been in the attics for a long time. So these were in the attics before we had the work done to get the attics refurbished. So this appears to me certainly to be water damage. So I think that these books have either got very, very damp or what's possibly more likely have actually had water running across the tops of the books. So that will be explain what this stain is. The um, fringing around the top and bottom, uh, around the top of the front and back covers of this particular volume, I think is actually because the book has been stored on a shelf that's not quite big enough for it. So in the course of shoving it onto the shelf, um, all of this damage seems to have happened on the um, parts which were already damp and so therefore more delicate. So um, the book which has been, the volume which has been rebound is actually in poorer condition than the volume which was not rebound. Um, this is still, I mean, it still has water damage, um, but it is relatively sturdy still, which is partly because it was half bound in leather. So the corners are protected by the leather binding. Um, and also being not right at the end of the shelf, this maybe has been a little bit um, protected from the damage caused by the, um, the um, narrowness of the shelves. So as books within the collection, they're really quite interesting. As books in themselves, they're also quite fun. So these books have been classified under section E within our cataloguing system. Section E is fine arts, including um, architecture. Um, and I think that that's why these have ended up in that section. These are books that describe and illustrate the art, the wall paintings and the architecture of the discoveries at Pompeii. So these are books which look at an archaeological site from an artistic and art history point of view. So this I believe is why these were classified in the art section rather than in section CC which was specifically antiquities. Um, and you can see that they um, the illustrations within the books are <coughs> of two kinds, really. So there are illustrations which are like this map or like this illustration here, which are just kind of factual copies of what has actually been found within Pompeii. But what we also have are a number of plates which are quite scenic and romantic. So um, these are artistic representations of the antiquities of Pompeii, um, not very scientific at all. And this is to do with both the date that the books were published and the author that published them. So, um, Pompeii, 
as uh, many of you I'm sure know, um, was a city in um, the Roman Empire in Italy, um, which was on the slopes of Mount Vesuvius. And in AD 79, Vesuvius erupted and completely covered Pompeii and its twin um, city of Herculaneum in volcanic ash um, and lava. Um, Many people died. This was one of the big tragedies of the classical Roman um, period um, and the cities were buried, as I say. Now, there was some salvage at the time. So there were some um, some of the fine, uh, some of the houses within the cities um, after subsequent excavation. It was clear that they had been um, uh, previously um, uh, broken into and things recovered from the site but there were further eruptions of Mount Vesuvius most notably in the 5th and 6th century which buried both the cities to even deeper depths so um, the cities were effectively lost. In the late 16th century um, an architect named Domenico Fontana was building an aqueduct and he discovered some of the ruins of the city um, but didn't do any proper excavation. In the late 17th century, there were the first actual excavations. Um, Herculaneum was rediscovered in um, 1738 by workmen digging foundations for the Summer Palace for the King of Naples. Um, and then there were further excavations going on through the 18th century. And in the mid 18th century, the first excavations that could be thought of as being um, somewhat more scientific were undertaken. Um, and and the the, the, um, the finds from Pompeii and Herculaneum, the number of finds and the importance of the sites um, became more and more apparent. Now, Italy was under French rule um, from 1806 to 1815, and large scale excavations of Pompeii were undertaken in that period. Um, however, in the years after French rule um, of Italy, it seems that the excavations faltered due to lack of funding. And that's um, part of where this, this um, two volume set of books comes in. So these were written by Sir William Gell, or Gell, I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced. Um, he was born in 1777 and lived until 1836. He was born in Derbyshire, educated at Cambridge, and then entered the diplomatic service. So in the late 18th and early 19th century, he travelled quite widely within the diplomatic service, in Greece particularly, um, and also in Italy. And he became, as was quite common amongst antiquarians at that time, really interested in the um, antiquities of Greece and Rome. He was an illustrator. He um, published books of geography, topography and antiquities um, with his own illustrations, which were very detailed um, and often shown, have subsequently been shown to be very accurate. In 1807, he became a member of the Society of Dilettante, which was um, a member, a group of British noblemen um, who sponsored the study of classical art. Um, so this was very much coming at these sorts of discoveries from an art historical point of view and a classicist point of view. And from the 1820s onwards, he lived in Rome, but also had a house at Naples, which is very close to Pompeii. And he was known to often show his guests around the excavations at Pompeii. So the books of Pompeiana were first published um, in 1817 to 1819. Um, and this first ver for this first version, um, William Gale was assisted by John Peter Gandhi, who was an architect as well as an MP. Um, th that ran to two editions and then this third edition is a new um, kind of um, sequel to the initial editions. This is looking at things that have been excavated at Pompeii since 1819. So this was published 1832. Um, so this is trying to raise the profile of um, the excavations that have happened since the French left Italy. Um, and it very much um, includes... Um, some, some of the very important finds, some of the very important houses in Pompeii that were discovered in that period, um, but looking at them from an art point of view and from a rather romantic point of view as well. And in the preface to the first volume, um, Gell says that he wanted to publish these quickly while they were still fresh because he knows that the discoveries will decay and get damaged by the weather and so on. And he bemoans the fact that he, as a foreigner, isn't, is not often not allowed to come in and see the finds and draw them until after this decay has started, which seems somewhat arrogant as a foreigner. Um, but this does very much show 
the notions of archaeology in the very early 19th century, late 18th, early 19th century, when it was um, antiquarianism, when it was um, something that was um, an acceptable interest and pursuit for people of rich birth, um, but didn't involve much in the way of actual scholarship or professional training. This was archaeology as kind of the recovery of interesting bits and pieces rather than anything more scientific. And these two books are really quite nice examples of that.